Hello friends, welcome back. In this video, we'll talk about at the rate controller and at the rate rest controller annotations. So guys, in this video, we'll talk about the differences between these two. All right. So that being said, let's begin the video. Now, guys, before we go and talk about at the rate controller and at the rate rest controller annotations, I just want to make sure that you know the difference between a rest API and a web application. All right. Now, guys, the basic difference between REST API and a web application is the response. The response from a web application is generally a view. So basically, you will get to see a page, okay, HTML plus CSS. Why? Because web applications are for the humans. For example, Flipkart. So guys, Flipkart is a web application because here we can see some data. And if I click on any link, for example, this particular link, I'll get to see another page, right? So this is the idea of a web application, all right? But in case of REST APIs, you will get the data in the format of JSON or XML. Why? Because REST APIs are mostly for the REST clients, all right? For example, we have a weather API, right? Now this particular API will return weather of a particular city, like the temperature, wind condition, or the sky, whether it's a clear or dark or dull or whatever it is, right? Now, guys, this weather API can be consumed by a mobile application or can be consumed by a web application. Why? Because your weather API will return the response in the form of JSON or XML that can be consumed by mobile application or can be consumed by a website, all right? Now, guys, let's talk about at the rate controller notation. This particular annotation is used to mark a class as a Spring MVC controller. So basically, at the rate controller annotation tells Spring framework that this particular class is the web controller and it is going to serve the web request. Okay, and it returns a view, a web page. All right, guys. Now, guys, at the rate controller annotation was introduced in Spring version 2.5. Now, guys, here I'm going to create a new project and I'm going to call it Spring Boot Dash Interview. I'm going to add time leaf and spring web dependencies. Click on next and click on finish. All right, so our project is ready. Now guys, what I will do, I'll simply go and create a class. Basically, I'm going to create a controller. I'll put in a controller package and I'm going to call it sample controller. Now guys, let's go and add the at the rate controller annotation. Okay. Now I'm going to create a function here, public string say load index space turn I want to return a view name so that is what I want to explain okay now guys let's go and add the request mapping request mapping I will add method first method dot get okay comma value equals to so basically here I'm going to add the path slash web okay so basically I want to see the response if I click localhost colon 8080 slash web endpoint what I'm expecting, I'm expecting a web page because we know that at the rate controller annotation, it will return a view name, a web page. But at the moment, we don't have the index page. Okay, so let's go and see the behavior, how it behaves at the moment. I'm going to run as Spring Boot application. Okay, so let's go to the browser, localhost colon 8080 slash web. It says error. Why? Because we know that we don't have the page actually. Okay, so guys, what I will do, I'll open the same endpoint in Postman. So Postman is a REST API client. Okay. So guys, here we have Postman. I'm going to create a new request and I'll, I'm going to make a GET request. Okay. And let's see the behavior. So guys, what do you see? It says internal server error. Why? Because we don't have the index page available, right? If you want to see the error message, let's go and check the error message. It says error resolving template. Template might not exist. Right. So basically, we don't have the page available right so guys let's go and create a view name so we are going to create an html page and we are going to call it index only index.html now here i will simply add one h1 say i am index page save okay now guys i'll simply stop and restart our application all right let's go to the browser localhost colon 800 slash web so here I see a page. I am index page, right? So guys, basically what is happening? At the rate control annotation, it returns a view name. So basically it returns HTML and CSS if it is available. How can we prove that? So let's go to the REST client. Let's go to Postman. Now guys, I'm going to hit the same endpoint. Localhost colon 8080 slash web. So what do you see? Here you see the HTML response, right? I hope it is clear now. Now guys, let's move to the next. Next one is at the rate rest controller. Rest controller is the combination of at the rate controller and at the rate response body annotation. 
what it does it basically handles the rest api request and the response is going to be json and xml response okay so guys at the rate rest controller was introduced in spring 4.0 right now guys let's go and first talk about these two annotation at the rate controller with at the rate response body annotation okay so here i am going to create another function let's call it sum data the function name is sum data right here and i want to return say sum data okay i am going to make at the rate request mapping annotation method request method dot get comma value equals to say say sum slash sum okay so basically to test this particular function we are going to hit localhost colon 8080 slash sum this particular endpoint what i'm expecting i'm going to add at the rate response body annotation here now guys let's see the difference i'm going to restart our application let's go to the browser new tab localhost and slash sum so what do you see here some data okay guys so this time you did not see the error message if you guys remember initially when we tested this particular endpoint without having the view without having the html page we got an error message right but this time this works perfectly fine why because at the rate response body what it does it basically returns the response into json format or the xml format right so as rest controller is combination of at the rate control annotation and at the rate response body okay so guys what i will do i will create another controller i'm calling it sample rest controller all right now guys here i will add at the rate rest controller annotation now guys here i am going to create a function public user i want to fetch the user information get get user okay and uh, return so we'll come back to it in a moment now guys first of all we need to have the user class so let's go and add new class i am going to add a new package class name is going to be user finish i am going to add some properties say for example name and say is city and let's go and add one more let's call it country okay i am going to create the getter status for all control s let's go back to the controller let's go and import from our model package okay now guys let's go and add the annotation so at the rate request mapping i will add the method here method equals to request method dot get comma value say for example i want to fetch the user information say api slash user okay now what i will do guys here i will pass some data here user equals to new user i will add a user information here user dot set name okay java user dot set as say to user dot set city and user dot set country okay now guys to return the response what i'm going to do is i will use response entity so this is the like uh, a good practice to use response entity dot okay and here i will pass user so basically guys what are we doing here is we are returning the user okay so change the return type to response entity here all right so guys we'll talk about response entity in a moment let's go and see the result now i'm going to hit localhost colon 8080 slash api slash user okay and this time guys sorry uh, i'll make it at the rate control only at the rate controller annotation with response body okay so i'm using at the rate control annotation only but with at the rate response body let's go and see the result first okay so i'll stop let's go and restart our application let's go to the browser now here localhost colon api slash user is the endpoint and guys what do you see here data in the json format right so guys when you use at the rate response body what it does it basically converts your object into xml or the json format okay because here you are passing an object user but here on a screen you see json format data in the json format right now guys i can remove these two i can comment response body and at the rate controller annotation and i can simply add at the rate rest controller why because rest controller is a combination of both it's a combination of at the rate controller and at the rate response body annotation okay so guys let me just restart our application and let's see the result right click run as spring boot app let's go to the browser so i'm going to open a new tab localhost slash api slash user now what do you see same result 
okay this proves that rest controller is combination of at the rate controller and at the rate response body annotation all right guys now guys i can try same here i will simply go and uh, i'm going to test the same on postman localhost called 8080 slash api slash user let's see the result send so here you see the response you see the status goes as 100 okay so guys this is clear let's move now guys as i just explained at the rate response body annotation it converts the object into json format all right summary so at the rate control annotation what it does it basically creates a map of model object and find a view okay so basically it will return the data with a view name and at the rate rest controller it returns object data in json or xml format all right guys so at the rate rest controller is a combination of at the rate controller and at the rate response body annotation and the key difference is now guys we know that rest controller is combination of at the rate controller and at the rate response body then what is the need of at the rate rest controller so the need is we can skip at the rate response body now guys the key difference is that you don't need to use at the rate response body on each and every handler method when once you annotate the class with at the rate rest controller what does it mean it means guys say for example we have 10 controller and each controller we have got 10 endpoints right so everywhere we have to use at the rate response body 10 times in one controller so to avoid this kind of reputation they have introduced one single annotation called at the rate rest controller all right so all right guys here we are done with this video thank you for watching